Biodiversity is key, as we've already discussed. By having a high biodiversity in an area, the ecosystems in that particular area are going to be more stable. Lots of human activities on Earth are having a negative effect on biodiversity. The population of the human race has expanded hugely in recent times, and this has been mainly due to advances in our technology. We are able to grow our own food, and so this prevents food shortages. Diseases can be cured and treated, so diseases won't wipe out our entire population either. This increase in population size means more land is needed for farming, mining and living on. All this means that habitats are being destroyed. Another issue that has arisen is the management of our waste. Not only bodily waste, but waste from our activities too, such as packaging from food and other products. Also, we have to consider the waste from industrial activities. The waste has to be managed, otherwise we will pollute our environment. Let's take a look at how we can pollute the environment. Land pollution could come from our bodily waste, industrial waste at landfill sites, and toxic waste from factories. Landfill sites take up a lot of room and destroy many of the local habitats, while bodily waste and toxic chemicals could affect the soil in the area, and this could lead to plants being unable to live there. This is why the proper disposal of these chemicals is important. Pesticides and herbicides are used by farmers to protect their crops from pests and weeds. These chemicals are poisonous, however, and could end up in the food chains where they could kill consumers. Herbicides and pesticides could also cause water pollution. These could have bioaccumulation effects of the aquatic life too. Bioaccumulation is where there is a build-up of poisons in the top predators of the food chain. This build-up means that top predators could die and not even be able to breed. Another thing used by farmers is fertilisers. These fertilisers could also be washed into streams and rivers. The fertiliser will contain large amounts of nitrates and other mineral ions. If these get into the water systems, it could lead to the rapid growth of algae in the water. This will then cause the plants to die, due to there being too much competition, and hence this leads to more microorganisms feeding on the dead plants. The microorganisms will use up a lot of oxygen in the decay process, and this will decrease the levels of oxygen in the water. This will then lead to the death of aquatic life forms, as there won't be enough oxygen for them to respire. Pollution levels of water can be judged using bioindicators. Bioindicators are organisms which are only found in either really clean water or really polluted water. These organisms are used to judge the pollution levels of bodies of water. Air pollution is another issue for humans. The formation of acid rain can have some serious consequences for many ecosystems. When fossil fuels are burnt, the sulphur impurities contained within the fuel will react with the oxygen and form sulphur dioxide. This sulphur dioxide, as well as nitrogen oxides, will dissolve in rainwater. Nitrogen oxides are formed by cars. These gases are acidic, and so when they dissolve in the rainwater, Acid rain is formed. Acid rain can cause the death of many plants and organisms. It can destroy roots, dissolve in rivers or streams and cause the death of aquatic animals, and so on. If the pH of rivers become too acidic, then the river may not be able to support any form of life. To prevent acid rain, cleaner fuel can be used instead of coal, and catalytic converters can also be installed. Catalytic converters remove these polluting gases from the fumes of cars. Particulates are tiny solid particles which reflect the sunlight back into space. These are formed when smoke is formed and this leads to global dimming. Smoke also has effects on human health 